Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore the 1910 classic yacht Tally Ho. Now that project is happening back in the US but right now I'm visiting the UK and we're here in Millbrook where we're going to look at a couple of interesting projects and I'm going to be talking to a very experienced boat builder and sailor called Chris Rees. So right now he's working on the rebuild of a 1905 pilot cutter which was a Bristol Channel pilot cutter built in Pill which is just at the mouth of the River Avon near Bristol. This is a boat of a vaguely similar sort of style and design as Tally Ho. Of course Tally Ho wasn't a pilot cutter, she was built as a yacht and she has a different stern as well and she's a slightly different size. But like Tally Ho, this boat has been completely rebuilt um, and there's very little left of the original. Well, we've known each other for a few years, but the last time I saw you was in the Sillies. That's right. right. When you were on your lugger, which you haven't got anymore. No, that's right. Three brothers. Three brothers. And you were on your little folk boat. Yeah. And I think when I first met you, it was a year or two before that, and I gave you a little bit of timber for a frame or something. Because you were in yeah. you're in the Greek and yeah. needed something, and you came in and took an off-crop from when we were building Greyhound, that was. Yes. You had some bits of timber there. Yeah. Yeah, so nice. Greyhound was an amazing yeah, project, yeah, it was wasn't a it? Project, so we had plenty of offcuts on that. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that, like the That's a, idea behind it? And that was a replica of a 18th century lugger, sort of general purpose mini warship of the era, yeah. sort of like little, you know, privateer or smuggling vessel or whatever. Yeah. Which we built not quite full scale. The original was 76 foot, and we built right. her at 66, yeah. 65. Um, that's a charter boat, but three masted lugger, which yeah. is a good big project for everyone. You know, you yeah, know, a huge, I mean, around. a huge boat to build traditionally. Yeah, um, yeah, biggest boat built like that for a long time yeah. right here. You know, many years. Well, the seventies really, since the end of the trawler building. You know, yeah. nothing, nothing that scale, of big built since. And you've, I mean, you've even before that, you've been building luggers, haven't you? you yeah, I built a, another replica lugger, for, but much smaller scale, thirty-eight footer. Spirit of Mystery. Spirit of Mystery. Spirit of mystery. Pete, That's Pete, what Pete, I mean. Pete Goss sailed to Australia as a as a repl replica of a, a sort of a voyage of em an emigration voyage, really, yeah. in the eighteen fifties. Some Cornish fishermen sailed it to Melbourne in Australia. Mm -hmm. and, to, to, to live. You know, yeah, I mean, that's an amazing story, going, even the, yeah. the original story of yeah, yeah, fishermen that was brilliant. Yeah. sailing yeah. to. Okay. So, what, he sailed from Falmouth? So, from Newlyn. So, from Newlyn yeah. in Cornwall. Yeah, in West, West Cornwall. To Australia. To, to Australia. And they in, stopped, in, stopped in Cape Town and then they got, they got, they took the mail, the, the post from Cape Town to Australia <laughs> because uh, there were no ship going that, wow. that month or whatever, I'm not sure. And that was in what era? Fifth, I think it might have been 54. 1854? 1850. Oh, not, but, oh, not quite. Yeah. It's in the 50s anyway. Yeah, the 1850s. 1850s, yeah, so <laughs> a long time ago. And they were just fishermen, they had no navigation or equipment. Yeah, they were fishermen, they were fishermen who wanted they? to emigrate and they couldn't afford the passage and thought, well, they couldn't sell the boat and it was a downtime in the fishing here, obviously. Yeah. And they decided to sail the boat there. But one of them must have been a professional, you know, a ship, ship's captain of yeah. some sort because he was a proper navigator. Yeah. You can't get to Australia without being a navigator. Yeah. You can fish out of Cornwall back and forth and yeah. on, you know, dead reckoning and luck and local knowledge, but you can't get to Australia like that. <laughs> Somebody must have had a sex then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what is it about uh, Ligers specifically, but traditional boats in general, that inspires you to take on these big projects? I don't know really. I mean, when I I was a fisherman when I when I left school. I was a fisherman. Okay. And the first boat I was on was an X lugger, okay. um, Ibis so five five one nine, hmm. and the owner of that was a, was a real enthusiast for those sort of boats mm -hmm. and old wooden boats and stuff. And he obviously had a, a lot of influence on me. Yeah, over the years. Paul Greenwood, that was making the the pattern to continue this 
this uh, co this coating has got a cap which comes right around the back and continues and the winch faces which are down there part of it but it's quite a complicated shape so I'm making it out of cheap plywood before making it out of expensive hardwood. And what timber will you use for that? It's all Oroco, all the deck all the deck gear on this boat is Oroco. It's like a Douglas fir deck, which is it's a composite deck, you know, it's laid on ply and glass. Uh -huh. And then uh, Douglas fir. Oh, sorry, then Oroco. Okay. But like this, this the rail caps are all the same timber. Yeah. And the hatches and everything. Should be teak, but we can't afford it. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you feel that the Oroco holds up pretty well? Compares pretty well? It's all right for this sort of work. It's really good for this sort of work. In fact, I don't like it structurally very much. I think you, you tend, you know, for like hull, hull structures. Yeah. I mean, you tend to use it quite easy to find hidden rot. Mm -hmm. Goes down the middle of it, you know. Yeah. We've had it a few times on different jobs. But. Yeah. Yeah, this is a Bristol Channel pilot cutter called Letty, one of the original ones, built in 1905 at Rolls of Pill, which is the the main Bristol pilot cut, you know, boat building area at the time. Yeah. So the lead on that for Bristol. Yeah. Worked as a pilot cutter until the amalgamation in the 20s, when yeah. they all then they were all sold off. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I think she went as a yacht then, but then ended up as a as a fishing boat in Ireland, called renamed Roaming. I think that's correct. Okay. Um, worked out of Arklo for quite a few years, mm -hmm. and then in the late seventies, I think, was sort of rediscovered as a pilot cutter mm -hmm. and taken to North Wales and had a lot of work done on her. And then the present owner bought her from there mm -hmm. and has spent a lot of um, time and money and effort on bringing her back to being. What we'll we'll be launching next year, and it should uh -huh. be perfect and ready to go again. Fantastic. Yeah, I gather it's more or less a complete rebuild. Yeah, I don't think there's very much left at all. We didn't do the hull. Um, another yard did the hull, mm -hmm. so I'm not positive about this. But uh, there's a little bit of in the fore end of the keel is original, uh -huh. the sort of four foot, and I think there's some bits of framing that are original, which is all the planking's new. Yeah, and all the framing that you can see here is all new. Yeah. So I don't think there's very much left at all. No. The shape and the history, you know. Yeah. yeah, and the name. And the name, yeah. that's right. Yeah. yeah. That's quite interesting. I've looked at a few different projects recently um, at different stages of build. It's quite interesting to see this one um, sort of midway, partway through the fit out. Um, what, so what portion of the work of building a boat would you say is in the fit out as compared to the hull? Well, Depends on the size of the boat, really, and the bigger you, the boat gets, rapidly the fit out becomes a bigger proportion of it. Mm -hmm. If you're building a, you know, like a 25 footer, you can put the, the fit out in in a week. Yeah. Because it isn't very much. It's two bunks and a couple of lockers, you know. Yeah. And um, but if you and then at 80 feet, it's probably it's well over half of it is in yeah. the in the fit out. And at this start this stage. The owner is quite keen on a, on a certain look, and we spend quite a lot of time, mm -hmm. you know, with these fielded panels and changing things around and being having it exactly how he wants. And yeah. So there's, that takes a bit more time than if we were just throwing an interior in, yeah, in sure. sort of painted tongue and groove and oak trim, which yeah. would be perfectly okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, but but having said that, it's, there's plenty of work in building the hull of a 53 footer. Yeah. It's not nothing. You know? Yeah. Well, as you know from your boat, it's, yeah. uh, it's quite comparable sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, we were saying this that is probably a similar sort of size. And yeah, yeah, they're, bit they're both about 30 tons displacement. Yeah. This one's a bit longer, but a lot of that is in the counter. Yeah. It's so, yeah. so they're quite comparable boats, really. Yeah. And this boat will be a, a private yacht again. Yeah. yeah. Do you think there's um, sort of work available for young people coming up into the... Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's more of a problem of finding people than... I think some people will watch my channel and uh, would love to know how to get started in boat building. How did you learn or how would you suggest to get into it if you're interested? Well, I, I was lucky in a sense when I, came, when I finished with the fishing, my, I knew that chap who ran the yard at the head of the creek here mm -hmm. in Millbrook and he just took me on as a 
you know, labourer, but will it, but willing to learn, and I just kind of picked it up quite quickly, and yeah. it was very soon a boat builder, and I've yeah. just kept going with it. Is yeah, a good way is to is to do a well, like you know, you've been working before, obviously, but but just to have your own, get some terrible old boat that you like the look of, and work on it until you learn something, and then it doesn't, co it's not costing anyone else anything. Yeah. And all you've got to do is find a few bits of wood and some you know, yeah. nails or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with, and you can learn a lot like that. Yeah. Um, it's a, you know a lot of the best boat builders are people who come in from that because they've got the real interest in the boats, mm -hmm. and also going to sea is a really good idea if you want to mm -hmm. be a boat builder. So you know what you're trying to achieve. You know, yeah. so that it's nice and strong and doesn't leak. Yeah, and that sort of that's thing. a really good point. But it is. I mean, it's, well, I think it's critical yeah. in boat building. You know, that to to have some idea of the seriousness of of what you're doing. Yeah. Rather than thinking, oh well we'll putty that up and it'll be alright. Yeah. Which is, you know, if you're building a house it works perfectly well. Yeah. Filler and paint and it looks right so it is right. But yeah. Boats aren't like that, are they? No. No. You do a lot of sailing as well, don't you? It's I have done. Yeah. Um, I do, yeah, I'm yes, I've done a lot of sailing as well. You know, yeah. I've done similar stuff to you going off to the Caribbean and things yeah. in the park when I was younger again. You know. Yeah. The last two years I've been in Greenland for the summer sailing. Fantastic. So. Well, behind me we've got another one of Chris's projects and this is the Kremel Ferry uh, which used to run between where I am now which is just inside Cornwall and the other side of the river Tamar which is Devon and this ferry was recently in an accident and was getting pretty tired anyway but Chris thinks that before that she may have been the longest continuously running passenger ferry in the country now Chris's intention is to try and rebuild the ferry, uh, get her going again and put her back on the water, back into service, but with green power, so with an uh, electric motor, electric engine. Built in 1926 as the ferry at Cremel, it's between Cornwall and Plymouth across the, across the Tamar, the last ferry, been a ferry crossing there for, there for a thousand years apparently. Wow. It's the oldest of the ferry crossings on the river. Okay. And running continuously, so, so far as we know. This was called the Armadillo and the other one the Shuttlecock. Mm -hmm. which strange names. But yeah, but, uh, I like them. As, as a steamboat. And then she was re-engined after the war in 1946 or 47, mm -hmm. I can't remember now, uh, to go to diesel and then ran as the ferry from then until four years ago when she was unfortunately in a collision and also she's getting quite tired. I think at the time she was the oldest passenger vessel in in, in continuous use. Wow. Wooden, wooden boat. In the country? Yes, I think so. Yeah. We're in, intending to rebuild her and put in an electric motor with mm -hmm. solar panels and the whole, uh, you know, okay. uh, renewables and including systems ashore to yeah, support yeah. that. It's built as the Armadillo, and you can just make it out here in the block. And then renamed Northern Bell in 1947 when they did the diesel conversion. Huh. There was steamer before that, and we're yeah. going to go for electric. Yeah. With the intention of being, you know, we've gone for the, the complete cycle of, of power, power yeah. supplies. Yeah. And uh, what's her length? 69. Yeah. Well, great. I hope you can save her. Yeah, yeah, be good. Thanks, Chris. It's really interesting to see what you're up to, and. Um, yeah, best of luck with this ferry and, and the other boat. Yeah, well, nice to see you again. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> So that's it for now. We've been here in Millbrook in Cornwall looking at some of the work that Chris Reese is doing. And I'm going to be here in the UK for a couple more weeks, I think, uh, before I go back to the US, to Washington, where I'm rebuilding Tally Ho, which is a 108 year old English wooden yacht. So thanks for watching, and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise supported the Tally Ho project. It makes a huge difference, and it means I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos. So I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time when we're going to be checking out some other boat yards and other projects and boat builders elsewhere in the UK. Alright, cheers.